a record of the delightful piece they're going to play this evening. Yeah. Want to start, Eddie? Uh, my name's Eddie, I play guitar. My name's Jason, I sing. My name is Jeff, and I play the drums. My name is Ryan, I play bass. So, you guys started out in 2008, 2009, in that no, area? Or 2006. Uh, 2006? The band oh. originally started, I think, in 2006 with like the name Media Blitz, 2005. Yeah. But uh, we never, we recorded some shit, but it was terrible. And we never really like did anything yeah. with the band uh, until about 2007 when uh, Ryan and Jeff joined and then we had two other guitar players kind of interchangeably for a while we kind of had guitar troubles and then uh, Eddie joined in 2008 or 2000, 2008 and then we've been recording and touring and being pretty active and doing punk stuff ever since then. Since, since I got into the scene from 2008 when you guys were playing what was the music like what was the music like back then in like 2008 2009 like that was like when... Like, what was the music like in general, like, sound-wise? AD is hardcore inspired. Tipper's Gore was still around. Bad Reaction was still around. Bad Antics had short hair. Yeah. Yeah, Flat Black was kind of like the Orange County yeah. punk yeah. force. Yeah. And they were kind of uh, very active and kind of putting bands out and making sure kind of the scene was really active and they kind of helped shape the sound of kind of really traditional 80s California yeah. hardcore, which was what was really popular at that time. Like, back in those days, what was your favorite local band? Like, Tipper's Gore, like, Bad Reaction? Mm. Or, like, in anything in that area, like, or your personal preference? Bad Reaction I liked a lot, so I liked a lot. I really like, like Rabies. Yeah, oh, like, Rabies. Rabies. Rabies was fucking awesome. awesome. Tipper's Gore was great. I liked DLA. Gross Negligence. Yeah. The band I probably saw the most was JFA. Does that count? Yeah. JFA? Yeah, I I'm, I'm not really in the late 2000s, but yeah, <laughs> JFA is a very good band. They're not from them. Okay. What? They're not from them. Yes, they're absolutely they're, not from They them. played a lot. Yes, they did play a lot. Uh, I liked the um, the imposters. I know that Wasted a lot nine of people for nine. Joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wasted 9 for 9. Oh, come on, guys, throw <laughs> OC, make it flat. <laughs> What, what's your opinion on like how the scene is getting faster, like into the like fast core, like grind core, like that type of movement? Like, where, where do you think that would go? And what's your thoughts about it? I don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really a fan of the yeah. that oh. type of music, but it's cool that people are starting bands. There's like a lot of them. Yeah, I, yeah. Me personally, I'm not really into the whole grind thing. Power violence is awesome. I like it. Um, but yeah, like Ryan said, uh, the fact that people are just starting bands and bad. just doing shows as much as possible. And touring. And keeping touring going. Yeah, like yeah fucking... keeping keeping something going. Is overall, I think, punk, hardcore, grind, PB, thrash, it's kind of all under the same roof. And it's just good that kids are still playing and still going. Yeah, there exactly. Was this, there was this fucking band that played... Did you you film that show uh, at the like the junkyard? Yeah. There was some band that was like with really young kids. I thought it was so fucking awesome. I saw the video. Um, Who was it? It, pl it played like during the day. That's like. It was like a. That's my a, friend Jacob fan. What's the name of the band? G Spot. G Spot. That band was so cool. <laughs> That's in a vagina. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mostly. They're all like 16, 16 17. Right? <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, I thought they were really fucking cool. Like. And they're not playing like grindcore or power violence. I'm, I'm, I'm also trying to like cover venues throughout the years like first of all were you around during the Hoagies days or, or like no um, um, the clinic days yeah yeah that's, that's when we like, started playing like um, explain your experience uh, for the like for the clinic and was it fun the first show I played with Media Blitz was at the clinic yeah, yeah me too uh, the first show that Media Blitz played at the clinic uh, my amp got stolen and that was a huge fucking oh, bummer yeah. at that void show I remember that. was really shitty, but that that place was really cool. And in retrospect, it's very, very funny that they got busted for selling weed, and it was called the clinic. I feel like that was foreshadowing, oh, and uh, I didn't even realize that till a lot later. And then I had a chuckle with myself, yeah, that, which is the best kind of chuckle, I think. The clinic was awesome. I feel like yeah. I feel like that's just a rumor, though. Like, not a rumor. 
Let's convince anyway, them. Anyways. I was convinced that place was going to be around for a while because like it was like an industrial area. Yeah. And it was pretty hidden. It stayed around a lot longer than it, was it for, probably should have. For <laughs> two years, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, almost. It picked up picked up for a while. They had really good shows there. Yeah, they had a lot of touring bands come through, which I feel like is really cool. They started doing some pay-to-play stuff towards the end. Well, which well, sucked, what do you but think it was the best show at the clinic in, in you guys' opinion? The best show I saw was the Bad Reaction. You know, yeah, from, uh, that show was fucking awesome. Uh, Broken Needle cover sets. Yeah, the Halloween cover set. That was fucking awesome. Bad Reaction did Bad, bad Brains and Broken Needle did Uniform Choice. Yeah. Every that time that awesome. Bad Reaction would play there, uh, Cash would let me sing Gatorade. <laughs> which just happened to be my favorite Bad Reaction song. Oh. And I want to say I was like... 17 or maybe freshly 18 and then every time I got to have a sing with Bad Reaction I was fucking excited because I was really stoked that they knew who I was. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool touring bands playing there like a Lop Gobber show was really awesome. Government and Warning played there. Government Warning played there. And just you know, Monster Squad played there. So did uh did? yeah uh, a Global Threat also played there. Oh wow. Yeah. We played there with Crumb Bums and Yeah there was a lot of cool Bands. They had a really, no, I think about it, they had a really wide selection of shows there. Yeah. What do you think was like the stand-up bands when, when that place is around? Tipper's Gore played there a lot. Yeah, I was going to say Tipper's Gore. Cool. They were like the, the big band that would always draw out a bunch of people. Um, uh, I saw a, a day show with Rabies and War Crime, and then they played a night show with what? Rabies and War Crime at the clinic, and the day oh, show... Yeah. Was that like a pool? Like a backyard, some dude's yeah. fucking backyard in like Santa Ana Garden Grove. Yeah. And it was just like a bunch of crazy old skate punk dudes I've never seen before. And they played at like the edge of the pool. And then afterwards they did a different, like a night show with almost the same thing. I think Bad Antics played as well. Yeah, Bad Antics played as well. And uh, I thought it was really cool because the lead singer was like this overtly Jewish guy wearing like swastikas everywhere. Oh, a war like, crime? Yeah, he had like a big old nose and just like super gnarly curly hair and his name was like Professor Chaos or <laughs> Doctor Chaos or something like that. Can you, re- can you relate to that because you're also a Doctor of Chaos? I can also, also relate to that because I am also a Jewish Doctor of Chaos or I tried to be. I tried to not wear as many swastikas as I do wore because yeah. Brace, Hitler's man. a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dude. <laughs> We submitted our rec- record to Maximum Rock and Roll. That girl we know, I was like, make sure Brace Belden doesn't review it. So he'll just write dumb shit that's not relevant at all. <laughs> no, he just writes really bad reviews. Well, I mean, just dislikes stuff. So back on topic, the yeah. clinic ruled, and there hasn't really been a place that's been around as long as them that was as the let bands do they wanted. what they wanted as much as them. And yeah. Except for Unit B, Unit B is yeah, pretty that's similar. Kind of, yeah, I feel like that place has a lot of fucking potential and I hope it goes well. Um, like, so as the clinic went by and other venues went by, this new place called the Riff House came by. Those, I, I have experienced some good shows. Like, how, how did you like the shows when you played there? Like this, the security, the atmosphere. I think, I think early on when, it, when they first started doing shows, it was really cool. Because they weren't super strict about things, yeah. like I don't remember there being security too too much security like at the beginning shows. Like one guy for a bit. Yeah, like, they had like one yeah. guy, and then but there, I, I remember there being just a lot of good shows there. And yeah, then, some of the best shows we ever yeah, played. Yeah, the um, our, our first record release show was there, and that was awesome. And we did another benefit show there, which was kick ass. And they they've always had they've always had really good touring bands come through there. Um, it just became harder to get touring bands because like yeah, the, cause the it, money situation wasn't ideal. Yeah. So it became harder to book smaller touring bands there because it's harder to get enough people to come out to, to the bands to get money. Yeah, and then progressively, yeah, the security kind of got worse. And worse, and worse and yeah, they started yeah, just being dicks there. And <laughs> I could see how people don't want to go to shows there anymore. anymore so. I mean, it's still around and they still do shows, but it's... Kind of off putting, I guess. You know. were, you, were you guys around during the Di Piazza day? Have you played at Di Piazza's? Or? Uh, we played some shows at Di Piazza's. Uh, we never tried to book a bunch of shows there, only because, like, uh, we played a few shows at the church. In Lo- at the Unity Church in Long Beach, which was, like, way more fucking awesome. And then that place got shut down. And the thing that sucks about Di Piazza's is, like, 
there's just a fat fucking pole that just sits <laughs> in the middle of the floor and it makes like moshing is super hard if almost impossible. So like, yeah, and also very dangerous, <laughs> more dangerous than usual. So we just kind of try to avoid that place as much as possible. But they have delicious pizza. Yeah. Really, really good. They've, they've had good shows there too. They've always, yeah. had, they've always had like played there with Toxic Holocaust. Yeah, Toxic Holocaust. And that, was, that, was, that was ridiculous. So weird the Total Fury show there was crazy. Oh, oh yeah. And the Last Supper's Gore show. Yeah, there was Last Supper's Gore show. Their last show there, and that was fucking ridiculous. That was awesome. Like, what, what was the, the craziest moment at, at one of your shows throughout years? Oh, I got one. I got one too. Right, I'll go first. <laughs> I hope you don't think my story. We Local, played a, locally, or locally, played or a, locally, 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 uh, or, in, or <laughs> well, well my story, local first. My story involved playing in Colorado. <sighs> oh yeah. Uh, same story. I, I, yeah, I believe yeah. it was in Boulder, Colorado. I think we're all on the same page. Here. <laughs> no, I got a better story. <laughs> yeah, we played a show in Fort Collins, Colorado, in a house, and it was really cool. There was a bunch of people there. People there. And uh, they had a keg and stuff. Two and everyone, <laughs> everyone was important. Having, everyone was having, they opened a third. <laughs> everyone was having a, a really good time, uh, especially a certain young lady who decided to get completely naked. <laughs> no, just <laughs> oh, just, just the bottoms, just the bottoms, just, just the bottoms, bottoms. and uh, proceeded to circle pit to media blitz. She was fucking. And she dropped on the ground and just like furiously. and just like fucking spread eagle. It was, was just it was crouching. At me. The worst slash best slash worst again show ever. Yeah. <laughs> so much crouching. Yeah. Oh. Oh man. Oh, yeah, her vagina cool. was so hairy. Her yeah. armpits were hairy, so you know her vagina was hairy. There's yeah. no way she shaved her vagina. She was also really sweaty. Jason, yeah. uh, what was your story? Uh, my story was uh, we played uh, a pretty cool show at uh, King's Music. Uh, in San Diego, <laughs> which is like this off shot spot. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I hate this story. Uh, and uh, afterwards, this girl <laughs> walks up to me after we play and just goes, Hey, like that was a really good set. Like, I really enjoyed you guys. And I was like, Oh, cool. Like, thank you very much. And uh, then, like, right afterwards, like, she goes, Oh, hey, like, uh, your drummer looks like Jack Black. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, uh, like, yeah, sorta. Of. Like he sorta of looks like Jack Black. Totally does it. <laughs> sorta. Of. And then she goes, "Oh, is he single?" And I was like, "No, he's actually like been dating this girl for a really long time. They're like pretty committed, like pretty into it. So yeah, sorry, he's not single." Like I thought she was just. And then she just goes, "Oh, well, like see my friend over there," and she like points to this girl that's like, uh, she like doesn't have any eyebrows and she's wearing like a bandana. You know, like clearly she doesn't have any hair. She's like, oh, like my friend is uh, actually going through chemo right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. It's so fucked up. And she's like, yeah, my friend is going through chemo right now, and like, you know, she's like, she doesn't, she doesn't have more than like six months to live, and she like thinks her friend is really hot, and she would really like to have sex with him. <laughs> and I just look at her and go, uh, I'll go ask. <laughs> and so I just walk up to Jeff, and I just go, hey Jeff, that girl over there has cancer. She's gonna die in the next six months. Will you have sex with her? And he just goes, Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. And she's ugly. And I didn't say that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, like, yeah. And then I don't believe it. one hundred percent. So basically I had to go back over to this girl and say, Yeah, I'm sorry, Jeff doesn't want to have sex with your friend, even though she's like, but like seriously, like she doesn't have that much long to live, she would really like that just one last sexual experience. And I'm like, uh, don't know what to tell you, like Jeff isn't interested. And the rest of the time, Jeff was just like fucking face to the ground, like not making eye contact with anybody. And as they're driving away, they're waving to like all the bands that were playing and Jeff just fucking head to the ground, just probably one of the worst, the most awkward fucking moments of his life, having to deny a chemo patient that's dying of cancer or last pleasure. That's not exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. More or less. That's more or less. Eddie, what's your story? <laughs> I don't know, Jason kind of took it. I'm trying to think of it right now, like on tour. Yeah, what about the Coke Den in, uh... Fuck, where was the that? Coke Den? The AIDS Den? No, when we had to go to that club the, with the Coke dealer to get our money at the end oh, of the show in yeah. Houston. Okay. Oh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't tell that. Yeah, I did myself. Okay. Cool. We can't, we can't let's, tell Let's, let's move, move on to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a lot, a lot more stories. <laughs> we shouldn't tell that one. <laughs> no. um, so, like, places like uh, Riff House and all the other venues that are pay-to-play, 
Like, what, what's your opinions on, on, on pay to play? Fuck pay to play. Yeah. No band should be doing that. Kills kills music. I mean, it kills the scene. Kills the legitimacy of the venue. Kills the legitimacy of your band. Yeah, it's, that also makes it really tough for bands that are trying to start out. We do pay to play shows. Yeah, it's just it just ruins the scene pretty yeah. much. Remember when that dude told Ditch that he was gonna never let Top Rock, he was gonna like get Top, uh, no no spectators blacklisted from like every venue in Orange County because Ditch sent him a mean message about not wanting to pay to play? I don't remember that. That was awesome. Um, he was like, I'm gonna call Chain Reaction tomorrow, I'm gonna call <laughs> everywhere, and you guys won't be playing any more shows excellent. in Orange County. And Ditch yeah. was just like, okay. <laughs> Like a few more, um, um, like, what do you think of like the new kids coming to the scene and like seeing new, this new blood, new life in the scene, like, do you think that's going to continue over the next few years? I hope so. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, it's awesome. absolutely a good thing and hopefully they stick with it. I mean, yeah. that's, uh, go for it. I listen to a lot of new bands, and there's a lot of awesome bands that are just starting or been around for not that long of a time. And it's great when people get involved. I think part of punk should be just anyone can get involved if they want to, you know, regardless of who you are, your background. Yeah, I feel like there was kind of like a, a void in Orange County for a little bit, just because I feel like we were like the only super active punk band for a little bit of time. And it's like, how are we supposed to like, have a scene when like we're the only band that's trying to put together shows and play shows and like try to encourage anyone to start a band and fucking book shows and, like even if I mean especially if we're not playing it like I would love to fucking play dumb house shows and all that kind of not dumb but like you know house shows and all that shit but like other people doing it and like you know making stuff for themselves is like what fuels the scene and what makes it interesting and what gives it like dynamic you know kind of like a diamond very multifaceted Going off of that, that last uh, explanation, uh, I've seen that house shows are on the rise. Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Or just... Fucking awesome. That's an awesome thing. Anytime there's a house that's willing to have 50 plus strangers in their living room yeah. or in their bedroom, it's an awesome thing. It's, house shows are always fun. I've, I think like overall for me, just doing house shows in general has always been fun. It's always, yeah, it's always a good time. It's always a good time. And, um, it's very rare that you find a house that can regularly do regularly do house shows like the cabin. Yeah. The cabin was doing them for a while. Um, and that was an awesome venue. Uh, but yeah, as as it goes for Orange County, it's hard to find a place that'll uh, and yeah. like do the DIY thing. places like that's the same in the same categories as house shows. Like it's all built from the from the ground up. Yeah. 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 It's just yeah. It's hard for those places to exist in Orange County just because the rent is so expensive and. Police and the police, yeah. yeah. But I mean, when it does happen, it's really great. And it's really awesome for the scene because you can book shows for touring bands, not have any overhead, so you can give the touring band all the donations from the door and stuff like that. So it really helps to interconnect Orange County with the rest of the United States, touring bands wise. And it sucks that we don't have more houses like that because that's how the rest of the country kind of works with house shows and basement shows and stuff. And, uh, right. you know, I've been seeing this venues go down like flies, and it's really just been this yeah. disappointing. Me, like. yeah, I feel like it's just kind of like the common theme of punk rock in the United States. It's like we've done a decent amount of like touring in the United States, and like we've gone to places several times, and they'll be like super fucking awesome DIY spots, yeah. and like sometimes they're around for a really long time, and it's awesome. But more often than not, they kind of close down every year or so. But like the cool thing that's kind of like inspiring is that people are always trying to do more and like a new place always opens you know like there's always someone new coming into the scene or someone that's old that's just super dedicated to it that's just like you know like i'm gonna start something up and like you know basically build it up from the ground up every single time like no matter what like no matter what the outcome of the last one was yeah it's kind of the nature of punk that places get shut down a lot but uh yeah it's it sucks when places like that close down but it's really inspiring when people go through all the financial and just other difficulties in starting a venue. And Ryan and I have looked into it, and it's, it's, a, lot it's a lot of money. We were almost there, except for that we didn't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> Besides uh, that, we were there. Last question. Where do you think 
the scene or the, the punk scene or the Orange County scene is going to be in the next five, five to six years? Do you think it's going to still exist? Do you think it's Hopefully still going to be strong? More, more people. Definitely be bigger and hopefully it'll integrate more with like the hardcore scene. That would be good. I don't know. We had our the record release show we just played, like this new spot unit B and like there was a bunch of heads I've never seen before at a record release show and everyone was going off, everyone like no fights, super positive vibes. So I mean like I hope that continues forever because I mean like I just want everyone to have a good time because I have a good time with it and like I hope I hope by nurturing the scene it continues to be fun, it continues to grow because that's like why people are into it in the first place. Thanks, you guys. Cool. Bye, This is God.